Hello everyone, welcome back and the topic today is subset simulation. We are going to uh, study a few papers uh, in this last module of the uh, reliability based structural design uh, because some of the topics that we are going to discuss in this module uh, are presented in different papers. Particularly in this uh, lecture, uh, the technique subset simulation was first proposed by uh, O and Beck and they published this paper in uh, the year 2001. So, we will uh, refer this paper uh, and uh, the mathematical models, their derivations and the problems also. And uh, as we progress, we will also um, uh, refer another paper uh, and we will see how we can implement this uh, subset simulation for a reliability based design. Now, if you recall, uh, we uh, learn Monte Carlo simulations, right? So, if we identify a reliability problem where we have a limit state and a number of random variables, then we can simulate that random environment and we can identify the uh, safe and failure regions. And uh, once we identify numerically the safe and failure regions and then we can adapt the classical definition of probability to estimate probability of failure. Now, once we estimate probability of failure, 1 minus probability of failure is the reliability of the structure and we can also find out the reliability index from the probability of failure. Pf is equal to phi of minus beta. So, that is how the logic goes in Monte Carlo simulation. In principle, actually it starts from the random number generation. So, if we have uh, random variables defined by their respective PDF, then we can simulate samples of uh, that particular PDF. And in fact, there are options to generate correlated samples and non-normal samples also uh, for the most complex case. Uh, and then uh, using those samples, we can numerically uh, evaluate the reliability of the structure. Now, we have also uh, seen how the number of samples uh, in a Monte Carlo simulation is affected by the quality of the result. So, if we reduce the percentage error in estimation, obviously we need large number of samples. And in fact, in uh, many cases, if we deal with a complex structure where we need to solve the structure using say a finite element model and if you have a large finite element model, in many cases uh, we also apply uh, time dependent load for example earthquake load or wind load and in that case if we need to solve large number of samples that itself becomes a problem and in many cases we cannot uh, implement this Monte Carlo simulation in a straightforward way. That is the reason uh, we always look for efficient versions of Monte Carlo simulations and what adaptations we can uh, propose to improve the efficiency of this crude Monte Carlo simulation. And one of them is what we call the important sampling. This is also what we discussed. So, instead of uh, taking samples from the uh, original uh, distributions, in this case, what we define is the important sampling density. This important sampling density is actually placed uh, near the failure region. So, normally what we do, we first solve the problem using first order reliability method and from that we know what is the MPP and we can use that information as our reference point and using that information we define the important sampling density in and around that failure point so that we have significantly large number of samples simulated in the failure region. So, that is how uh, we improve the performance of Monte Carlo simulation from its crude version to this important sampling. In fact, uh, we also uh, studied this uh, limit state function and how this important sampling density improves the quality of uh, the end result that also we have studied. For example, in this case, this blue star point is the MPP that we get from the first order reliability analysis. So, we use uh, that MPP, that information and place the uh, important sampling density. In fact, uh, uh, we can uh, optimally identify what is the important sampling density function, but for uh, ease of use, very often we uh, 
propose multidimensional uh, normal random variables, uncorrelated normal random variables, and we place that uh, normal distribution in and around this point. The reason is normal distribution is symmetric. And if it is centered around mean, and if you set that as the reference point, obviously we expect large number of samples on either side of this point because of the symmetry of the distribution. And that's the reason you can see in this example, we have large number of red dots in the failure region, uh, almost similar number of um, green dots you can also see on the other side of the limit state. And that's how the uh, original Monte Carlo simulation was improved. This actually significantly improves the computational uh, efficiency uh, without compromising the end result. So this is an improved version of Monte Carlo simulations. Subset simulation is again another version of the improved Monte Carlo simulation. So in this case, we'll uh, see how we define these uh, subsets as, as the name suggests. The complete uh, problem is actually subdivided into smaller sets and that's how the name subset comes and we actually simulate every set and hence the name is subset simulation. It is in general robust uh, and, and efficiency wise uh, far better than the original Monte Carlo simulations. The only thing is uh, in this case we uh, define these subsets, the number of subsets and then we use again Monte Carlo simulations to simulate that subset. But the problem is not straightforward as we see, uh, as we progress, we'll see that how we can actually simulate this uh, cases. Obviously, in this case, conditional probability will come, uh, which was not there in the earlier version of the Monte Carlo simulation. Now, in this case, the only advantage as we progress, we'll see it can uh, offer uh, a feasible solution for very low failure probability. So if you have a small failure probability, then uh, original Monte Carlo simulation takes a long time. The simple reason is uh, if we have a probability of failure, say uh, 10 to the power minus 3, so at least we need 1000 samples to get one sample failed. Uh, actually, in reality, we need much more, uh, but uh, at least one in 1000 if the failure probability is that suggests that uh, we need a minimum of 1000 samples. Now, in this case, uh, if we have a probability of failure really small for important structure, for example, if you have a bridge or a, a nuclear reactor, obviously in these cases, uh, we have very low failure probability. And if you have very low failure probability, the number of samples in crude Monte Carlo simulation increases and at times it becomes very difficult to implement them even with the modern computational facility. But for them, uh, we can easily adapt subset simulation. Uh, it can simulate small probability of failure and for large uh, dimensional problems. So if you have large number of random variables that also can be handled in this case. So what is the trick? Let us first uh, use a numerical figure to just understand what is the um, proposal in this subset simulation. Just imagine if you have a failure probability of say 10 to the power minus 3. So we can imagine this event as a product of three smaller events with smaller probabilities of 0.1. Effectively, we'll get the same failure probability. But the advantage is if we try to simulate 0 0.001 in the first instance, at least we need 1000 samples to have one failure. As I said, we in reality, we need many more, but for the time being, because we have uh, 0 0.001, so we at least need 1000 samples. However, if we split this into three subsets, and in each case, we have a probability of failures of 0.1, obviously the number of samples to simulate 0.1, according to the same logic is 10. Obviously, it is not 10, it will be more than that, but it will be much less than what we have in case of the original probability of failure. So effectively, what we will do, we will simulate this, uh, this events corresponding to um, probability of failure of 0 
But the thing is, the first case is very easy to simulate. Uh, we'll apply the Monte Carlo simulations. But when we go to the next step, obviously, uh, for that, uh, it has a condition that the first set has already occurred. And that's where the conditional probability will come as we progress, we'll see that. But from this numerical description, we can easily sense that instead of simulating a very low failure probability, if we can represent that in this product format, then probably that will give us a numerical advantage that we can intuitively conclude. So our objective in this subset simulation is evaluating small failure probabilities that is in the original probability space, which is replaced by a sequence of events in the conditional probability space. So that's where the problem statement lies in the subset simulation. So we start with the original probability space that we replace with a sequence uh, uh, in the conditional probability space. And symbolically, you can see it is represented here. So if we have a failure event, say capital F, and that if we can actually split it into smaller events in this sequence. So we have altogether one, two, three up to M small events and collectively they represent this uh, main failure event represented by this capital F. Now this is a, obviously it is a decreasing sequence of failure of events. So FK in this case will be intersection of all this I ranging from one to K FI where k is equal to 1 to up to m. Now, we know the conditional uh, probability and its uh, definition. So effectively what we have, pf, which represents this uh, complete event. So if uh, we have this fm, so this probability of this is now actually uh, split into smaller events fi, where i ranges from 1 to m. Now, we can rewrite this product in this conditional format, which comes from the definition of the conditional probability. And then uh, if you follow this, ultimately, effectively, what we'll get is this, uh, the representation of the PF. So in this uh, product form, what you can see, the first component is the probability of FM given that f minus 1 m sorry f of m minus 1 is already occurred times probability of uh, uh, all fi's uh, i ranging from 1 to m minus 1. So this is how the sequence is generated and the conditional probabilities in this case uh, can be evaluated uh, using a Markov chain. Obviously, in these uh, introductory lectures of different uh, um, advanced techniques in this last module, we will not go into the detailed derivations, uh, but we will give you uh, the sufficient introduction so that you can uh, further develop these uh, methodologies. So in this case, again, uh, we are not uh, going into the details of this Markov process and its uh, uh, description. We will assume that uh, you have a background in Markov process. If not, Obviously, uh, please go through the uh, respective theories and just uh, study Markov chain. But in this event, uh, what we'll do, uh, we will actually simulate this conditional probability. And we'll apply Monte Carlo simulations to simulate this smaller events. And the moment we use uh, conditional probability, then we need to simulate also samples from the conditional probability, which was not there earlier in case of um, Monte Carlo simulations. In case of Monte Carlo simulations, we start with a random variable, which is defined by its respective uh, PDF. Then we can generate random numbers and we have discussed in detail how we can generate random numbers and we can convert one random number into another. And that's how we can simulate any distribution. But in this case, because we have a conditional probability here, obviously the simulation uh, is a uh, little tricky and for that we have this Metropolis algorithm. Then uh, effectively what we have, uh, we have this PF is actually represented by this conditional events. And then we start with uh, one event and then sequentially we simulate 
uh, the complete uh, set and then finally we evaluate the probability of failure. Now in this case, uh, in this uh, expression of PF in terms of uh, subsets, we express failure probability as a product of sequence using the conditional probabilities fi plus 1 given fi. So it actually starts with f1 that is the first uh, event that we simulate and then as we progress to the next one obviously uh, we uh, use this conditional definition. So the idea of subset simulation is to estimate the probability of failure by estimating these quantities represented by the conditional probabilities. And as we progress, we'll see how this improves the overall computational efficiency and how we can actually implement this for uh, actual reliability problems and how to solve the limit states. So effectively, we start with the first event, say F1, and for that again, we uh, adopt Monte Carlo simulations and this uh, expression we have already discussed in case of Monte Carlo simulation. So for first event, again, uh, we simulate n samples and we check this indicator functions. Then for this indicator functions uh, to be one, it is uh, a failure case. So we actually identify all those failure cases. And then using the classical definition of probability, we estimate this first event. Here again, this theta k, they are actually uh, independent and identically distributed samples simulated according to the joint PDF of K. So this comes, the first one comes from the definition of the problem statement. And then uh, we need to go to the next event and which is again is a conditional uh, probability of Fi plus one given Fi. So if you start with I equal to one, obviously the next one will be F2 given F1. Now it can be simulated that means we can draw samples as per this conditional probability. Uh, for that, what we need to do, uh, we have to make sure that the samples that we draw for this theta, it must lie within the region defined uh, by this Fi because Fi has already occurred. So it must lie uh, within that uh, region. And obviously, the definition of conditional probability, if you recall, it goes like this. So uh, that will ensure the occurrence of uh, the event Fi in this sequence. Now, uh, so the task is to efficiently simulate the samples, uh, obviously, uh, that forms this Markov chain in this Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, we will use uh, Metropolis algorithm actually in this uh, the paper uh, I'm referring to uh, they used a modified version of Metropolis algorithm which we'll see in a minute but in this method uh, samples are simulated uh, as the states of the Markov chain uh, uh, it has a ergodicity assumptions uh, which means actually the target distribution uh, is uh, uh, in limiting uh, stationary distribution so we, uh, we can actually uh, start with a proposal and then because of this ergodicity at the end of this simulations, it will actually follow this conditional probability. So if we can simulate a sample having a conditional distribution, say Q of uh, this uh, given Fi, we can use the method to simulate a new sample as the next state of Markov chain, which will also be distributed as per this conditional probability. Now, once we do that, then uh, it is effectively a, a Monte Carlo simulation. And then using that, we can actually simulate the failure. Now, the question is, if the current sample is not distributed, then what happens? As we progress, we will see we will have an acceptance and rejection criteria uh, that will ensure the limiting distribution property uh, it ensures that the distribution of simulated samples will tend to actually the conditional probability that we are looking at. So for that, what we need to do, we have to increase the number of steps. As I said, uh, we'll use a modified version of the original Metropolis algorithm. And uh, 
here is the uh, mathematical expression for this uh, uh, Markov chain that we are going to simulate using this conditional probability and uh, here this theta 1 to n they are the samples. So, uh, the algorithm goes like this. So, uh, we start with uh, the proposal PDF which is again this uh, represented by Pj epsilon of given theta. It is It will be a one dimensional PDF for epsilon centered at around theta with the symmetric property this is uh, required uh, we will we will discuss this in detail because of this symmetric property we will see we'll have large number of samples uh, that will be accepted for the uh, next step then what we do we generate the sequence theta 1 theta 2 up to theta n uh, for a uh, given sample theta 1 by computing theta k plus 1 from this and then uh, what we do we generate a candidate state so this candidate state for each component of j equal to 1 we simulate basically epsilon j from this conditional probability and then compute this ratio r and then uh, once we do that we set this theta uh, j as equal to epsilon j and for that we evaluate the probability and uh, then uh, we check the acceptance or rejection. If you recall, we need to simulate the sample so that uh, the previous event has already occurred. So we started with say F1. So it must be in that region where uh, we have uh, the samples that has already occurred and simulated in the previous uh, subset. And that's how the logic continues and then uh, we uh, complete the simulation procedure through this acceptance and rejection criteria. So in brief, uh, the state, uh, it depends actually on the current state and then uh, once we repeat this procedure through this symmetric property uh, of the uh, one dimensional PDF, then we actually ensure uh, the new samples that we accept they actually lie in that region where fy is already simulated so the step one uh, in this uh, uh, simulation it is actually uh, following random walk in the neighborhood of the current state theta k and uh, because of that acceptance and rejection criteria we only take the samples which is actually lying in fy so the thing is uh, once we uh, do that in in step two um, we can actually um, use direct monte carlo simulations once we have this samples which is lying in this region of fi now if you recall that uh, important sampling there also we used a sampling density function and that sampling density function was uh, centered around the MPP and because of that only we uh, got samples from the failure region and that's how we improved. In this case also we have uh, si simulated samples and because we satisfy this criteria that FI has already occurred we only select samples for the next iteration which is lying in that region. Now the question automatically comes we can instead of uh, looking in and around that current state theta k we can actually simulate the complete domain and in that case again it becomes a crude Monte Carlo simulations and that again needs a large number of samples. Obviously uh, a higher acceptance rate if we try to uh, achieve uh, then the spread of this uh, one dimensional proposal density uh, that has to be narrow because uh, in that case the probability of having samples in and around theta is more if the spread is more obviously we'll have large samples which will be rejected so the ultimate numerical success of this technique is governed actually by this uh, uh, selection of this uh, proposal density and how narrowly it is defined with the symmetry property that we'll see as we progress now once we do that 
uh, our task is once the samples are simulated then our task is to check the limit state function and then define this indicator function uh, once this indicator function is one that means we have failure and that's how we simulate the uh, uh, failure of the limit state so so effectively what we do uh, we obtain samples distributed as per this conditional probability and then uh, we follow the Markov chain and then using modified Metropolis algorithm we actually simulate the next uh, candidate states. So obviously uh, if uh, once we have this all accepted uh, samples then uh, these samples will be distributed as per this conditional probability and can be used to estimate the next event which is F2 where F1 has already occurred. So, obviously in the next step once we simulate F2 the same logic will be continued. So, for the next step we will ensure the samples uh, which lie actually in the domain where F2 has already occurred and that is how uh, we will continue to ultimately reach the total failure probability. Now, now the conditional failure probability is given by this expression. Obviously, you can see uh, once we go to the i plus 1th chain given that ith chain has already occurred. So, then again we adopt the same expression for the uh, Monte Carlo simulation to simulate that event uh, represented by f i plus 1. And then uh, finally we combine all these subsets and uh, once we combine all the subsets we basically get the total probability of failure as the product of all these subsets. So, uh, before we go into the details, let me just uh, quickly go through the uh, paper that we are referring to. So, here is the paper which gives you the complete mathematical details of uh, the subset simulations and uh, all the derivations. Two interesting problem is solved which uh, I just wish to show you in this paper. So, there are uh, first example is that it is a S of oscillator, it is a linear oscillator, but it is excited by the white noise excitation and uh, in that case, uh, the omega that is the natural frequency of this oscillator is given and the damping ratio is also defined. Then uh, failure is defined as the displacement of the response exceeding the threshold level B. There is a time duration, obviously this is a white noise, it continues for uh, complete uh, I mean t tends to infinity but again uh, the failure is set that within first 30 seconds uh, if the response of the structure crosses this level then uh, it is a failure so the limit state here is given by this expression so in this case the dynamic response of this structure is solved for that uh, you can adopt any solution technique any numerical solution techniques for example od45 or similar techniques can be adopted to find out this x of t. So, for every t we have this displacement and then over this time of 30 second that is the window over which we estimate this uh, failure. So, we take the absolute value and then if, if it crosses the limit then uh, we call it a failure. Now, here is the result. Uh, sorry. Here is the result you can see the probability of failure as the threshold levels are changed and in every case uh, the samples uh, are simulated and then Monte Carlo simulation is used with 100,000 samples and the result is compared with subset simulation and you can see for every case these dots are actually showing how they are matching. So, the result from this subset simulation is perfectly matching with the Monte Carlo simulation results but in this case uh, here the sample size is much less um, 
compared to monte carlo simulation so the second example is a five story non linear hysteretic shear building model so in this case again the story stiffnesses are defined and not only that uh, each story is actually modeled uh, using bowcoin hysteresis and the property of bowcoin hysteresis is also given and here is the expression for this uh, uh, five story shear building model it is also excited by white noise but in this case it is also uh, modulated by uh, deterministic amplitude modulation and all the structural properties along with other details are also given here and the result is here in this case also 100000 samples are used for monte carlo simulations and you can see the subset simulation results perfectly matches with the uh, monte carlo simulation result so that ensures the uh, quality of this and then also the for the first sample uh, for the first sorry example uh, 50 samples are used in case of subset simulations and you can also see uh, if uh, 50 samples are used then also the subset simulation result matches with the monte carlo simulation similarly in case of uh, example 2 also again uh, subset simulation is actually uh, carried out with 50 samples so you can easily sense that uh, how less number of samples are required for subset simulation once we split the failure into smaller Uh, subsets and that's actually the advantage of this technique apart from that in this paper there are other properties also uh, proved i will suggest you all of you to go through this proofs these are very interesting derivations for uh, the probability estimates from this subset simulation so uh, which we are not going in details uh, in this course but again i will suggest all of you to go through this paper because this is a interesting development and uh, it is extensively used for uh, uh, simulating uh, reliability problems for actual structures so you can easily adopt this uh, model uh, to see how this uh, proposal can be used for efficient uh, simulation and it improves the quality of monte carlo simulation now we'll also use uh, another paper this is another interesting paper which actually provides the matlab code for this subset simulation and not only it 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 actually shows the application for reliability analysis it also extend its for structural optimization so these are the two papers i will suggest uh, for all the participants to actually go through in this paper there are certain interesting examples which i just wish to show you so uh, the first example uh, where actually the uh, probability of failure is estimated as per this limit state function uh, here you can see uh, we have uh, a number of uh, random variables and then uh, obviously all of them are standard normal and then uh, the parameters b and n uh, are given and you can easily sense the number of random variables in this uh, limit state function is very high and in this case again uh, we can easily uh, simulate the problem using uh, this technique so obviously the target failure region is f where this limit state function is less than 0 and uh, that also we can uh, simulate and then uh, we use 300 samples in this case and uh, the conditional probabilities are equal to this is the sequence of events uh, that is simulated now here is the result so we start with uh, the simulation of this sequence and the cdf for uh, of this age is shown here also the result is here so for this different sequence of sub events we can uh simulate the pf and in this case pf is also shown here along with the samples now uh this is uh shown in this second paper so here actually uh the details of this uh implementation is given so in this paper again uh the interesting part of this is the 
codal implementations using MATLAB. So I will suggest all of you to go through this uh, code and these codes are also available. You can actually um, get it from this website given by the authors. So you can also go through the codes and see how this uh, efficient uh, simulation technique is actually implemented. Now, the problem I was actually talking about is given at the uh, end. So here is the one example. Uh, we'll come to that in a minute. But uh, before that, the other problem is given. Anyway, uh, you can see it. So the next problem uh, we will go through is basically the one given here. In this case, uh, that you can see, this is a uh, minimization problem uh, because this uh, algorithm also you can use for uh, structural optimization. So in this case, um, this function, this is called camelback function. So in this case, we have six hump camelback function. So the expression for that is given and the domain of search is also given. Now, within this domain, this function has six minima while there are multiple maxima also. So all these uh, local minima uh, we can search using this algorithm and that complete uh, uh, optimization are also shown here as we uh, increase the number of simulation levels. And ultimately once we complete that exercise, uh, we get the global minima for this problem which you can also cross verify with other simulation techniques. So this is an interesting result which is shown in this paper. So I will uh, suggest all of you to go through this results and the subsequent coding, how can you can use it. The only advantage is you can extend this algorithm for um, different other uh, reliability based structural optimization. Now let us consider a different example again from the same paper. So in this case, it is a frame and having two uh, point loads, one acting vertically downward, another is horizontal load acting from left to right. Now under these two loads, the frame can fail if the plastic hinge is formed and there can be three different mode of failure. So the problem statement says that the random variables are P1 and P2 which are normally distributed and the properties of the random variables are given. So in this case, uh, what we wish to find out is the minimum of this uh, three failures possible. So uh, we have three different limit state and uh, based on that, uh, we have to find out the overall failure of the structure. Now the first limit state is defined here. Similarly, we can also define the other two limit state functions using uh, plastic deformation and then uh, once we do that uh, our task is to find out the overall um, failure under this three dominant collapse mechanism. So here again we simulate the event using a different uh, P0s uh, that you can see on your screen and then uh, using uh, them we can simulate the overall PF and that's what is uh, shown here and along with the samples. So uh, this problem also shows that in case of uh, uh, failure where we have multiple limit state using subset simulation, you can actually complete the task. There is a very interesting problem in the same paper. Here again, uh, the optimization problem is solved. So for that, a tension compression string uh, is designed. In this case, again, uh, the objective is to minimize uh, this function for this entire uh, uh, spring structure and under this uh, action uh, it actually suffers deflection shear stress and and of course uh, the main uh, parameters are x1 x2 x3 as you can see the wear diameter that is small d which is x1 then mean coil diameter capital D and the number of active coils in this uh, system. So altogether three random variables and then our uh, 
objective is to minimize this problem subjected to some inequality constraints corresponding to each random variable and then there are multiple limit state functions. So these are the different limit states. So our objective is to minimize this function and that is also done for that a total function evaluation you can see on your screen and the optimal results. So that is done and the optimization history also you can see here. So as we progress uh, after uh, we increase the simulation level, uh, we reach the convergence and that's how this uh, optimal design vector is found out for this problem. So uh, this can be found in the same paper. So here is the problem statement along with how you can actually uh, solve the uh, problem using the code given that also are uh, demonstrated here. So you can run that code and make sure that you get the results. The only point to be noted here, you can extend this case for structural optimization where you have multiple limit state functions to satisfy along with some equality or inequality constraints. So this is a very interesting problem, the last one. And I will suggest all of you to try and solve this problem. And uh, that will give you clear idea how you can extend it for any other design problem that you may face. So with that, let us close our discussion on subset simulation. Thank you very much. Thank you.